certainly for me when I started the vegetarian journey, like that wasn't easy. To me, it, it was like, oh, it's easy to just take out meat, but like keep the rest of the things. In my mind, that's already good enough to, to transition to vegetarianism. Why wouldn't you just eat the dairy cows and the, and the egg laying hens? They get slaughtered, you know that? The point is, change is very difficult. I have to push back on that. You're talking about moving your hand to the plant milk. <laughs> You're talking about moving from the eggs to the tofu. I didn't really think more so into these practices, into what actually happens. Well, you know what um, happens to fish. No, no of so, course. So we know what happens to fish. No, course, we won't yeah. let you off the hook. No, 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 no pun please intended. don't. It will put you on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll have some empathy. Um, what I'm doing now, and I'm very much aware of it, is it goes against my values. Are you setting an example you'd want others to follow? Okay, right. I have a cod here. Yeah. And they're, uh, should we give them a name? No, we better not give them a name because I'm about to torture them in this tank. Please don't. <laughs> So what's your name, bro? Uh, my name is Misha. Misha, nice to meet you, I'm nice Joey. Nice to meet you, Joey. So on the sign here it says, why aren't you vegan? And uh, I want to discuss ethical veganism with the people who aren't vegan. Are you vegan? I am not vegan. I've been a vegetarian for about eight years until very recently, actually. I've, uh, this summer I've started eating fish. Uh, so I'm now a pescatarian. Um, yeah, but I do understand the moral implications and also the environmental effects of veganism and it is very good to for planet overall what do you think the moral the moral arguments for veganism are well in terms of morality i think what is happening overall is very horrific if you think about it billions of cows are murdered every year and billions of chickens are murdered every year among other animals if you think about it like every life is precious and every every animal deserves to live it is not up to us to really decide who deserves to live and who doesn't um we are born equal i believe and we are just the same where we are just the other animals as well uh, just because we are um on some sort of intellectual intellectual pedestal above those animals doesn't mean that we get to decide who deserves to live and who doesn't um we're equal and we shouldn't decide to kill them i think so should I go vegan now or something? Is that not a great speech? So why are you, so that's interesting um, yeah. that you say that because with um, the reason I'm vegan, I'm concerned with animal rights. Yeah. And um, it, animal rights are the way that some people get tripped out when I say animal rights because they think that I'm expecting rights for chickens to vote or something like this. <laughs> but really we're talking about their right not to be interfered with, enslaved and murdered, things like this, things yeah. like negative rights, like don't do this to them. Yeah. It's really easy to, 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 to draw this parallel when you put humans in place of the animals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, fundamental human rights, you know. And um, so what I, what I would like to get into is why you are eating um, fish and dairy and eggs, because yeah. in, those, in those industries, animals have their rights violated and they also have their welfare violated in a horrible way. But I'm... I do. The reason they have their welfare violated, for the most part, legally, is because they don't have rights. Yeah, I believe they're born with moral rights because of their inherent value, just like you and I. Yeah. Uh, we're born with uh, sentience, consciousness, and what happens to us matters to us, so we have inherent value. And I believe animals have, in, they share that property with us. Mm. So it's wrong to violate their rights for our own interests. I mean, truly, like it's comparably, it, 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 you could compare this to slavery and genocide, what is happening to them on the farms. Realistically, it is it is a tr truly horrific sight. Uh, if you've ever watched those videos, what how the, these productions work, it is truly horrific. Uh, and if you compare with, if you think of it in a human context, it's just so 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 disgusting. Um, yet many people are, I think, blind to what is happening because it, 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 we don't get to expose to it that that much, right? You do, you go to supermarket and you just see meat and you kind of disconnect it with that product. And I think that's why for a lot of people actually that they continue eating meat, fish and uh, consuming um, animal products. Is that the truth? Is that true for you? Because it feels I, to me like, yeah. because you're doing the dairy and the eggs and the fish, it yeah. feels to me that they're not like, like a cow and a pig, maybe you avoid those animals, but there's a lot more disconnect with milk and eggs and maybe even the fish because they're like not a, they're not a mammal, you know? Yeah, certainly. When, when I started, when I, when I just turned vegetarian about eight, eight years ago, for me, certainly it was a moral uh, reason to do so, uh, more than environmental. Um, 
but consuming animal products seemed better. Um, it seemed like dietary wasn't much of a change for me. Uh, it was just literally taking out meat products out of my uh, meals, but the animal products were um, were kind of still there. And it was just easy transitionally. It was quite easy uh, in terms of my diet. Um, and also the disconnect. Like it, seem, it seemed that the animal products, the, they are more humane derivative. You know, like instead of slaughtering animals. Are you talking about, when you're talking about animal products, you're talking about animal byproducts, like, or not, that I wouldn't consider them a byproduct, like milk and eggs you're talking about. Milk and eggs, butter, all that stuff, right? Yeah. So it seems that those products can certainly be derived in a more humane way. So what is your definition of humane so I know what you're talking about? You know, the organic and free range stuff. Like when, you know, the, the basically when the animals are treated well and um, they, they're not sort of caged in a very like, small spaces and um, they're looked out generally really well. Um, so so when you say looked after really well, yeah. Um, what is your metric here? Are you talking about in, in what, what are you comparing well to? Are you comparing it to factory farms or some other horrible torture or? Well, yeah, basically uh, traditional farming um, that, that has been in place for, for hundreds of years compared to that, yeah. Like let's say I went and bought like a tortured dog from a tortured dog salesman. <laughs> right. Do you believe that I have moral culpability in put, put, putting in demand that tortured that dog meat? Because obviously you buy these animal yeah. products, right? And obviously you've justified it to yourself. Or maybe you haven't. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of that. Yeah. But do you believe in that, that me creating a demand for a certain uh, thing, I have culpability in creating that demand? Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, if there was no demand, there would not be an industry for it. No right? supply. Yeah, that is that is exactly what what happens, and that's how economy runs, really. Yeah, right. So um, indeed, if if more people turned away from consuming those products, there'll be less um, less of the strain on animals and less uh, of those inhumane practices. I would like to know what you believe happens to these animals in the dairy and egg industries that you support. Right. I mean, I I do not know too well what exactly is happening. And, and again, I guess it's more so a place of comfort. The, you know, if you don't know exactly what's happening, morally, it is easier to consume those products, I guess. And in, in day-to-day -day life, you don't really think about it as well. So, you know, it, it's kind of... No. And, and you can make the same argument for eating meat as well, I guess. You know, you don't really think about it. Why wouldn't you just it? eat you the animals? Huh? Why wouldn't you just eat the dairy cows and the, and the egg laying hens? They get slaughtered, you know that? I, I, yeah, I know. So why wouldn't right. you just eat them if you're paying for the dairy and the eggs? You're just, it... I know. Um, I mean, uh, my grandfather, he had a farm and uh, I used to see uh, chickens and uh, goats getting slaughtered. And I think for me, that was that was what ingrained in me that sort of the, the picture of murder and, and suffering of those animals. And to me, I've always viewed them sort of similar to us. Um, I don't, I don't consider humans to be of any different to any animal, right? Oh, there's differences, but we share some valuable things in common. Like indeed. Sentence consciousness and, you know, we're animals. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So to me, that always was like a, a, a huge thing. Yeah. Like animal life was precious to me. And I, I, whenever I can, I try not to not to impose any harm, even on like, you know, small insects and stuff like yeah. that. Whenever I can, I could, I, I try to, you know, save them if I like find a spider or something in my shower or something like that, you know. Um, but but let's yeah. let's focus on like you know you, you don't eat slaughtered animals because you have a preference not to because of yeah. what you witness. Yeah. Um, the egg and dairy, the the <laughs> egg and dairy cows or the egg laying hens and the dairy cows will go to the slaughterhouse too. So even in a free range situation, they do. So yeah. And you believe they're having their rights to life violated when they go to that slaughterhouse? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly, certainly. So you're feeding um, people who eat these dairy cows. You're, you're basically putting into demand an industry that slaughters dairy cows and puts them in burgers for McDonald's. Yeah, I mean... Or whatever yeah. mince, mince product they go into, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do not deny that fact. Yeah, certainly, um, by but, just merely consuming it, yeah. I, 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 I create those dem that demand. And um, so, so where's the line? It. So what I'm trying to figure out, yeah. like is now you've got dairy and eggs yeah. here and fish here. Yeah. And you've got slaughtered animal bodies and factory farms over here where you don't you don't want to support yeah so why is it why have you made this distinction here again so for me it was it was more so the ease of the transition between the 
meat eating and uh, the other side, the more sort of moral and more environmentally friendly side. To me, it, it was like, oh, it's easy to just take out meat, but like keep the rest of the things. Yeah. Um, it was it was not it was not based on a complete morality, but more so on the comfortable transition between the two. Because I initially I did not think I would be able to um, to make a successful transition to a completely vegetarian diet. Mm. Um, I thought it would be too difficult. So, so you I, took a step and you yeah. stayed there and yeah. you've taken a step back and started eating fish again. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So because there's a, there's a bit to unpack here. <laughs> yeah. Because like basically if you haven't, if you have a, essentially if you had a, in a human rights position, you wouldn't um, allow um, free range trait equalized human beings to go to the slaughterhouse so you could take milk from them or you know if you treat, treated human beings like property is that essentially so you could get some products from them like so, I, I don't think you would you probably have a hard line against that yeah i assume you've got a soft line here that sort of leaks into these other industries that you you don't mind supporting uh, or that you feel is justified or you have like you feel yeah. like you're doing enough maybe because you, you know a lot of vegetarians feel like well this is my line i'm you know i'm comfortable yeah. with eggs and dairy i'm not comfortable there and you've got fish there too yeah do you believe fish are sentient I do not know, and I do not have the answer in that way. But I do believe that they deserve to live, and they deserve to uh, not have that those rights violated, nor the freedom of movement or their life. They deserve to be free as any other animal. Well, they have to be sentient if you believe that. Otherwise, I, if they're I, not sentient, why would you? Why would I care? I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be sentient, basically yeah. conscious of their experience, uh, aware. Yeah. Of what happens to them, they can feel pain. Things like this, they have a brain. Yeah, yeah, in that uh, case, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, good because you're in line with the consensus. They're not all sea animals are sentient, yeah. like oysters and things like this. Obviously, I don't really give a damn if if they're not sentient, if they don't have yeah. a, a, awareness or, you know. So, uh, uh, animal, animals, sentient animals, deserve the rights here, is what I'm definitely. Yeah. But then there is also the circle of life and like the the food chain. Like, are you going to impose moral implications on, say, uh, a predator for eating its prey? Right. I or mean, like, or like, um, that's a separate question. I mean, omnivorous animals, right? They, yeah. they, they do eat plants and other animals. Of course they do. And yeah. so do humans. Why, why, why is there a difference? Why, why is there a difference? Yeah. Obviously animals kill each other in, in nature too. And, um, we would say in human civilization that that's an immoral thing to do. Um, you know, we wouldn't say because we're omnivores, we have uh, carte blanche to act how animals act in nature. Obviously, we've de developed ethics and morals in order to function in a civilized society. Um, to point to nature and say that animals eat other animals or animals do this and animals like have sex without consent and do all these other yeah. horrible things. We wouldn't, you would never apply that out to uh, our, our own race, to other people. We wouldn't say, oh, yeah, yeah. well, I can do this because lions kill each other's babies and things like this. Yeah. You know, um, or, you know, chimpanzees uh, murder each other or <laughs> lions murder humans as well. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and they're, they're, they're obligate carnivores. Obviously, uh, when we're talking about ethics and morality, we obviously uh, we have a good fundamentals for that already. And we basically we have human rights already. So why are you putting into demand industries that clearly violate the rights of these sentient animals? And uh, would you... Would you do it if they were trait equalized kind of human beings? Because you believe we're equal. You said you yeah. went as far as to say we're yeah. equal. I don't believe we're equal. Right. I believe we share properties in mm. common, like sentience, that make us both have inherent value. But I think we're very different. But you said we're equal, right? Yeah. So, so, so if the, if we're equal, and this fish is going to be dragged out of the ocean, suffer and die, <laughs> and then you eat yeah. them, <laughs> then. Yeah. Then, but you wouldn't eat a human, obviously. No, clearly, definitely not. <laughs> so we're not, not that equal, I hope. <laughs> um, I guess so, right? But like, going back to what we were saying, morality is very. Uh, I mean, it's a very human-centric thing. It, yeah. it, it has been developed by us. It's a, not an absolute rule. Um, oh it, no, it is it's, it's subjective. It, it is very subjective yeah. to human experience. Of course, so yeah. the morality and the rights that we have developed, those are very human centric. Of course, and they will always be that. Way. Oh well, no, well, well, I would still say, like, um, even though we created this concept of morality, which is very, you know, it's, it's great that we have, yeah. we have this. I mean, you know, but we can't just your morality shouldn't contradict itself. <laughs> you know, your uh, your ethical framework should be consistent. Um, otherwise, you have a clear contradiction there. Like, I can't say, like, I value you as a human being, but the camera woman there, like, I don't value her because I have made this arbitrary decision to violate her rights and 
and I like you quite a lot or something like this, yeah. you would say, well, why? You're, you're basically arbitrarily selecting who deserves rights and who doesn't. And you say, and I might say to you, well, morality is a human construct. So who cares? Like who said, what is it grounded in? We made it so I can just yeah. pick and choose. Well, no, it should be consistent. Okay, yes. And so when we have these animals over here, we have these eggs and dairy, which yeah. kills the rights violations of these animals. And over this side, you, you've basically drawn an arbitrary line. I mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. But then, is that justified, though? Is is that justified? Um, I don't know. Again, it, it, you, what I'm doing now, and I'm very much aware of it, is it goes against my values. Um, but uh, changing things is is sometimes difficult, even though you are aware of these moral choices. I, I mean, if you even for some immediate eaters, right? I th I th I'm sure some of them would be would agree that that is probably against their moral compass, right? Of course, yeah. But these changes are not always easy. Um, and certainly for me, when I started vegetarian journey, like that wasn't easy. And now I'm very painfully aware, even more so than I was before, of the morality of killing the sen sentient be beings and violating their rights, but also the environmental impact, which is also quite massive. Of course, um, that's but, a separate, that's a whole separate, yeah. uh, it, that, that yeah. is a separate discussion because it's yeah. not to do with vegan ethics. It's to do with, uh, there are some, there are some places where environment and, and animal rights might intersect in some way, but yeah. uh, that's a completely different topic because you can violate animal rights and it'd be good for the environment like yeah. hunting and I'm not for hunting, I think it's murder. So, and, you, and the most environmentally friendly thing to do would be to, well, I mean, you could think of human beings, we're the most environmentally destructive human uh, animal on earth. You know, exactly, you can yeah. think if killing human beings would be very good for carbon footprint, it would still be a human rights violation. You see how these yeah. two topics, they clash. Yeah, um, certainly. But like, it's the point is, change is very difficult. Um, Wait a second. I have to push back on that. Cause, right. Because uh, buying an egg or buying some milk at the shops, like you're talking about moving your hand to the plant milk. <laughs> you're talking about moving from the eggs to the tofu. No, but it's, it's the fundamental change in your diet. It's every single meal you have. It's it's uh, it's your preferred taste, and the f and the further you oh, wait, go wait, along, wait. so that's different. That's yeah. taste preference. Yeah. So that's not a practical argument. That you, when you say difficult, what do you mean by difficult? Well, you you get used to a certain way of life, right? When you wake up, you do certain things in a day that are not habitual. That, that are habitual, right? Okay. And certainly, something like eating meat and eating da dairy and milk products and all that, right? That is. Like you've grown up a certain way, and the further you go along in life, like the the more deeply rooted that uh, kind of way of life is, and so making certain changes would be arguably a little bit more difficult um, later on in life okay. than earlier. I get you. I get um, you. I feel you. It's like a habit that you've developed over time. Yeah. Does, but what I'm looking for is a moral justification, because you know I used to be a I used to be a gang member. I used to be a violent gang member like ten years ago, mm. and uh, I went to prison. I got sober, and I turned my life around. Now, where I'm from, I spent 12 years in a very violent environment. Like, I, I mean, incredibly violent. And violence was like a way that, that we communicated. Mm. Stay away from me. Don't steal that off me. I'm going to, you know, punch you in the face or do... Now, it was actually quite difficult for me to, to change. Right now, it's, it's almost all out of me. Like, unless it's in a self-defense situation, obviously, I can yeah. switch it on if I need to. But in, I don't use that as, as my way of going through uh, civilization or society anymore. Because I'd be an outcast, wouldn't I? Yeah. I'd be exactly. put in prison. Yeah. Now, I've learned that. Now, that was difficult, but that doesn't justify me going around punching people because that's how we used to do it back in where I'm from. <laughs> yeah. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, th that's what I'm looking for is like a moral justification, not like it's too hard. Because to, if we, we put humans over this line where, where your arbitrary line is, yeah. and we exploit them and kill them and put them in slaughterhouses, I'm sure you would say, oh, it's a little bit hard to choose something else, but I'm going to because that there's, uh, that's too much for me. Human beings, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, okay. I mean, the way I view it, the mass murder and the mass exploitation of animals is definitely horrific and it definitely has to, has to stop. Um, I mean, the numbers are absolutely huge. And if you think of just the sheer number of it, I mean, there are billion, billions of, of individuals, individual animals, you know, being slaughtered and being exploited. That, that is an insanely huge number. I mean, just to think of it, like that's, it's just it's crazy. massive. Think of sea animals though, it's trillions. Yeah, absolutely masses and masses and masses. Um, so definitely when we're talking about the, the mass murder and like 
with the increase of human population and increase increase in demand will rise ever so like uh, even more and more yeah. over time so definitely these practices that we have now they are unsustainable and immoral uh, yeah. and we cannot continue them we we'll agree on that we, I, I, so, I, so what yeah. I'm trying to find out, right? We agree. Yeah. And you're very, you're, you're well versed on this, and you're, you're educated on the topic. But what we haven't got to the bottom of, yeah, which is what I'm really interested in, is undoing why you've made this arbitrary line. Yeah. How you justify it being a fish and being a dairy cow and being an egg laying hen? Do you buy free range eggs? I do. Yeah. Okay. Do you know much about free? I can just educate you on free range eggs. Yes, I mean, basically. but this is a welfareist argument. But the the the. But, you know, you can't actually buy a free-range egg in the UK right now, actually. They're all barn eggs um, because they're, or bird flea, they've been left inside. But even if they are let out, um, free-range egg barns, there are 16,000 birds in, in, a, in a barn. Mm. So they're essentially a factory farm without cages in there. Yeah. And uh, there's no way for them to develop uh, normal hierarchies and uh, pecking orders. And the animals are uh, bred a certain breed of animals selectively bred over time to produce egg after egg after egg after egg. And this uh, makes them deplete calcium and they end up becoming uh, egg bound in their stomach and then they lose feathers and they can die before they even reach the slaughterhouse. And then it's basically just full on like animal slavery. I don't know how else to explain it. They're, they're machines to lay eggs. Yeah. And then they, um, they are all sent to a gas chamber to be slaughtered and their bodies eaten. Uh, not necessarily by human beings, pet food, this and that, but you know, um, I've got a suspicion they're going to human food. Um, but that's prolonged suffering and uh, yeah. yeah, for eggs. So that's a free range situation. Well, that is absolutely horrifying. Uh, the, the, the description and the imagery, it, it is absolutely horrifying, truly. Yeah. Well, that's a, uh, this is common. This is common practice because most of the eggs yeah. in the UK, I mean, it's over 50% are f classified as free range. Um, so it's basically, we're, pr we're taking away these cage scenarios and we're just putting all of our demand into free range and they need to meet that demand. So they have to have yeah. mass production. Yeah. How many people eat free-range eggs, you know? Almost everyone. Do you oh. ask almost everyone that eats eggs? They all go, I always get free-range, man. I always get free-range. Well, then you're creating a demand for factory-farmed free-range eggs. Yeah. No, you, you, you're right. You're right. I, I think... I, I don't think I've created personally that line on... No, you haven't created them. <laughs> you're not no, no, no. really responsible, obviously not. No, no, I, th I think I haven't created that line yeah, with a very deep thought. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, it's... Yeah. It was at one point, for me more so, it was like for at one point, I want to make that change. And in my mind, that's already good enough to, to transition to vegetarianism. But then beyond that, I didn't really think more so into these practices, into um, exactly how we get these animal products and what exact, like what, what actually happens. Well, you know what um, happens to fish. No, no of so, course. So we know course. what happens to fish. No, so we, won't course, let you off, course, we won't yeah. let you off the hook. No, 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 no pun please intended. don't, please don't. No pun intended. <laughs> it will put you on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll have some empathy um, straight away. Oh, I don't want to. But, no. yeah, but you know what happens to fish. So what happens to the fish that you eat? Let's just talk about that. Well, uh, I mean, there are various ways in which they, they are caught. Uh, some are more sustainable and some are more humane than others. Um, but let's talk about the more humane ones. I want to know what, how you humanely kill fish. What's going on there? I, I do not... I'm not well versed in that topic at all, actually. But, but like, but I know there are various practices. Uh, sustainable doesn't mean humane. I mean, I can sustainably yeah. kill humans. They birth, they birth more humans every year. So, like, I mean, I'm not really concerned with what's sustainable. Yeah. Well, uh, I might be, but I might <laughs> I might not be as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. Murder can be sustainable if there's enough population growth. Certainly, certainly, yes, yeah. Um, I guess because of the demand, I think there is there is like that demand needs to be met. And so there are either sustainable ways to meet the demand or not. And so in the world where we are looking to increase sustainability, that, that, that those practices be, are better. That might not be our goal, though. I mean, certainly. Because there's certain yeah. things that, that are incredibly egregious that cut against, that, that, might, that might actually be sustainable. You know, so I'm more concerned with the, the rights violation of the fish. Uh, and if they're sentient, they obviously deserve some fundamental rights. So I want to know, like, how how these fish are being humanely killed. Um, I I actually do not know. I, I must say, I do not know exactly. I don't think it exists for fish. You know, there's no slaughter guidelines on fishing boats. No. So I don't. I mean, I mean, even if you go into like a UK slaughterhouse, at least they got guidelines. Whether or not they're adhered to or not, I mean, that's a different story. But they got guidelines. I don't think kit murder can be humane anyway because they don't want to die, and it's not our. It's not our. Who who are we to dictate who lives and who dies so we can eat them? I don't see a justification for it, but. 
but with fish, oh, they suffer the most in terms of if you're just concerned with welfare, like yeah. fish, are, fish are suffering in a horrible ways, suffocating to death on, on, the, on the boat decks. And Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely a lot to think about. I think more so for me to research about. I don't think, again, like these, like the questions of morality and the questions of rights, like if you don't research them and if you don't think about them, certainly it's easier it's easier to go on along with the with the practices you you you've put in habit right you put in place and so because because i haven't properly thought of it it for me it it doesn't it doesn't seem like a question a very deep question for me whether to eat or not um but you went back to products. fish right so i want to know because a lot of it, people do go back to fish and i, I think did. it's it's because uh, they are different to mammals, and they're 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 so far away from us, like in terms of their anatomy. And they, you look at a fish, and there's no expression in their face, and it's like, how do I empathise with a fish, kind of thing? Yeah, I I think more so for me, it was it was that, like it was that they're a little bit different to other animals, um, but at the same time, not. I don't know. Like at the time, it was, it was just sort of like um. Okay, I'm okay to eat some fish. So I've had a fish right here, right? Let's do this thought experiment. I have a fish here. Yeah. You're in a tank. What kind of fish do you eat? Just out of curiosity, because I want to put that fish in a tank right here. Um, let's just say cod. A cod. Okay, right. I have a cod here. Yeah. And there, uh, should we give them a name? No, we're not give them a name because I'm about to torture them in this tank. Please don't. Please. <laughs> so don't. there's a cod in the tank, yeah. right? <clears throat> now I'm I'm going to torture the top the cod with a yeah. with a metal prong, and I'm poking them in the eyes, and I'm going into their eyeball, and I'm and I'm the the, the cod is like moving around and showing to us with their behavior that they're they're being caused pain would you try to stop me yes why i it's just horrible like you're literally just torturing an animal right in front why does of, torturing an animal matter again because it goes back to believing that they are sent, sentient okay. right you're so there's causing, someone in there basically yeah. that i'm torturing yeah you're causing suffering okay um okay what about this i've got a gun and I'm going to shoot them directly through the brain, right? And there's cod in there. And I, otherwise, I can just release them into like a nice area where they would live out their life, have some little fish, babies, or whatever they want to do. I don't know what cod preferences are, but right. like the, I, I've got a gun now. I'm about to shoot them, and I say, "Okay, do you want to do you want a fish sandwich? I'm going to shoot this cod. Would you allow me to do that? Provided it went straight through their brain, didn't cause them any suffering. I I think not. No. Well, why do you care? It's just a cod. For me personally, I don't want to see the suffering and the, the killing. And Well, the killing isn't suffering. It, it's murder. So okay. I, I prefer not to see that. You know what I mean? Okay. And and even, even though I do eat it, I don't see it. Well, you and pay I, someone to do the same thing. Well, and, and it's not well, it's not even that situation. It's actually the other situation where they're being tortured first for fish. Yeah. Um, uh, but obviously, as an animal rights activist, I'm not always just concerned with torture. I'm also concerned with the, the fish's right to exist without us being interfered with. Yeah. Um, but you're paying someone to do that exact thing almost, you know, the True. torturing and the killing. True. So where's the disconnect? You talked about disconnect at the side of the conversation. Um, what would it take to connect the dots and make that decision? Because, you know, like your, your actions have ripple effects. You know, yeah. if you say to yourself, if you, like just by you existing and conversing in society, your actions, your principles rub off on people on society and you can be part of that change and i'm wondering if you've got this if you're like i don't eat these animals but I eat these animals and these animal products which go they go to the slaughterhouse they get tortured and killed you really don't have a consistent ethical framework you're really not doing because for these animals here it's just as bad for them as it is for these animals here that you've arbitrarily selected not to to contribute to yeah that. you're right you're right there, there is no consistent um framework moral fr framework in this um I think some choices are better than others, obviously. Of course. And um, but only so, because some choices are much worse than others. Yeah. And 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 comparing it to something that's like so bad, then yeah. anything's better than that. Then that's it's not yeah. a very good. Let's to compare it to best case scenario. Yeah. Not killing, living vegan, respecting animal rights. Obviously, shooting animals in the head without them suffering hmm. is still horrible compared to that. Yeah. No, it, truly. Um, yeah, it, it is just a, it's just a very, very tough thing. You know, um, one thing from one side is personal preference, whether to not eat or not. And a lot of people, I'm sure, wouldn't have thought precisely on the implications of their choices, that their choices make on other people around them. But certainly that that is, it is quite huge. And especially when we're talking about like families, 
say, you know, parents would, would be eating fish and meat and all that, that would transpire into the lives of their family and their relatives. Are you setting an example you'd want others to follow? So I'm, I, I'm, I, saying, I'm saying if, yeah. if, if you said to me, Joey, this is how I want you to live. Just just yeah. eat fish, dairy, and eggs. And then, and then I said, okay, everyone in the world, if I could click my fingers, everyone just kill the fish, the dairy cows, and the egg layers. So you see, I, I, as I started this conversation, I was, I was aware of that these choices are not, they're not, they're not great in, in terms of moral reasons, nor in terms of the environmental reasons, which we haven't discussed, but they are huge as well. Of course. Um, that, that's not the question. I'm aware of these practices, uh, that, that that's not good. But for me, I guess, again, this is deeper rooted in disconnect, right? That, that I, I have not thought about these things and I don't think about these things on a daily basis, but things like that, what you do, these discussions, um, they matter. That's why the, this matters, because it puts you right, your face, like you're face to face with the fact that of these practices, how horrible they are and the suffering, like the visualization of like you torturing or killing an animal right in front of me, right? Even though I eat fish, to me, that is an unbearable image, right? <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? It is, right? But yeah. because of that disconnect, I really don't, you know, my day-to-day, -day, you know, life, I don't really think about that. I just, you know, I use the uh, animal products and I just go along with my day as if nothing happened, right? Um, you're, you're like, from, from the standpoint of consumerism, you're already like disconnected from it. Like that's how the industry runs. I think if, if we were presented more with these images, with this, like, with this information, I think people would be thinking more about it, but that's not the case. You know, no, um, it's not the case. And also, like, uh, I think with, yeah. with something like fish, you obviously know there's a fish chopped up on a plate there. So, I, I mean, that's, I mean, yes, it's disconnect, but obviously it's a chopped up fish. So, True. obviously, they were murdered and chopped up into pieces. Whether they suffered or not, they yeah. mostly suffer. They're mostly tortures. I, I mean, every fish is dragged out the ocean and suffocates to death, or they're smashed in the head with some type of, you know, um, hammer or something like this. Yeah. Or, you know, so fish is a bad example because the welfare is so bad for fish that they're really all the time there there's some horrible torture going on to them but what i'm saying is when you look at the plate you see a chopped up animal you see them chopped up like if there was a chopped up human okay so there's a human arm on the plate you wouldn't have to question how that arm got there yeah no but if you if you see like a say like a steak or like it's not like a, a right. like a, like no, a no. whole fish right if you if you if you see like a, a steak right that is a little that is a little bit different to seeing like an actual like full-on animal right like a, like an actual yeah, fish in yeah. front of you you can like, walk through it, a butcher and not picture an animal and just see meat because their the animal heads have been removed and yeah their, their whole it's been taken away from what they were yeah so but, it, but if you look like fish in the eye right if you see like the actual <sighs> dead dead fish right and you just see it like look at it in the eye it's a much different experience to looking at the steak have you seen fish be eaten alive in uh, no. mukbangs and things like this no yeah, yeah. and like do people uh, do that yeah yeah they put, yeah they eat fish alive or they put fish on a plate the fish will still be kind of conscious and then they'll pour like hot oil over the fish uh, body the, the fish will kind of be half scaled and then the, the fish will still be like moving their mouth that is horrific that is it, it is horrific but i mean i don't see the symmetry breaker like i don't see how that's different to dragging fish off the off a ship of a boat it might be okay yeah it might be marginally more suffering involved but suffocating to death under a group of your friends slowly dying of like i don't know not being able to breathe seems pretty horrible too i just don't see why that would be much more horrible i mean i mean at the end of the day it is literally just murder and um uh, mass suffering and that we're causing um there is yeah i mean there, if you didn't care like about if you said to me look joey look i don't really have a rights position i, don't, I mean if it was humans i wouldn't care if it was dogs i wouldn't care if it was pigs i wouldn't care if it was i just don't i just don't care I mean, I guess that I couldn't really argue with that because I'd just be like, well, there's no reasoning with you. But you do care. You actually called us equal and then you said all these things like, you know, so you do have this value. You're contradicting your own values that you, you've said to me. Yeah. You know? And yes, morality is subjective like we, we said, but your subjective morality is completely contradictory. It's not even, you know, it's, it's I, like, I very much agree. It's arbit very arbitrary. Yeah, yeah, I very much agree. There is no hard line because I've never defined a hard line in my in, in my set of principles right so yeah. where are you at now like where are you at now with this because obviously fish share the value uh share this the property sentience the egg and da dairy uh cows the egg laying hens and dairy cows they obviously yeah. have this value of sentience they go to the slaughterhouse get chopped up same thing um rights violated so where are you now you're like okay they share this property that i care about which is sentience consciousness yeah yeah so how are you draw still drawing the line are you gonna you're gonna start moving the line over <laughs>
I think so. I think in this time that I that I was vegetarian, I think I I hadn't really thought once properly about what it is, and you know, I I sort of researched it initially, and then I was you know I I saw the suffering and all of that, but then as I went along. Like that was just the just the practice that I got used to, and that was just it. That was just a thing that is happening, but there wasn't much thought behind it. And so over the years, I haven't developed that hard line, um, and there wasn't a deep deeper understanding of what what it is that I'm doing and why am I doing it. Um, so that that's why there was never a hard line. Yeah. Um, but now now that we had this discussion, I think it's opened my eyes a little bit more to um, think deeper about these things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to research a bit more about these practices, about what is happening in, in, in fishing industries and in industries that drive um, milk and eggs and all of that. And I think I'm going to be moving line over. Hmm. Um because the practical argument, right, that's easily solved, how to go vegan. There's so many resources and organizations. and uh, Certainly. Yeah. Still, like, really, right now, it's so, like, really. But when I went vegan, there was less. I had to really look. I went vegan 10 years ago. Um, now, for you right now, it's like they're handing it to you on a plate, mate. Like, it's very, very simple. It's a small habit change. And, like, once you know how to replace the eggs and the milk is just, come on, there's so many different plant milks now. You're right. You know, oat milk and soya milk and things like this. So, really... <laughs> I mean, it's, you're just in a really good position here in the UK, you know. You can make it cheap as well, cheap as you want to eat, yeah. basically, or as expensive as you want to eat. Same with any other diet. No, you're, you're so, so right. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't thought about it uh, like, like that deeply. And I'm, I'm very glad I have had this chat with you, actually. Yeah, I, I, I do think I want to move that, make that, that move. You, seem right, it is, you do seem print, like a it, principled person. That's what I felt from you. Like you have values. You straight away, boom. We're equal with this, you know. You, you you speak like that. You have empathy. You care. It's it's not you know, not everyone speaks like that. Most people I speak to actually don't speak like that straight off the bat. Mm. So you already care. I'm just showing where like you know you could just extend that line over and have this principle that kind of encompasses, it. like it, it's more consistent, encompasses everything, all the but, sentient animals. You know what I mean? And humans as well. You just draw the line across. You could just go all the way across your moral system, and it's like really consistent, and you you could. No, you We don't have a justification. Yeah. Now, there are times when, when humans and animals die in civilization and, and it's like these are incidents or things like this or as a, as, a, as a result of plant farming or things like this where these aren't clear rights violations. They're not mm. grabbing them, enslaving them, breeding them into existence, chucking them in slaughterhouses, cutting their heads off just for their eggs and their dairy and things like this. You know, so you can't live without... There, there's going to be death around, but obviously there's justified and unjustified harm. Yeah, I mean, slowly... If, if more people are getting to choose this, this pra these practices, the better practices of like, veganism, it's, it's, the demand is going to get go away. Yeah, it's going to go away. And uh, these practices will be almost non existent. Yeah. Uh, but, but looking into the future as well, like, even people who do wish to eat meat, I feel like that will change, th those practices will change as well because of the lab grown meat. Um, yeah. So looking into the future, I think. Even even the, for the people who don't do not don't want to make those yeah. changes, still in the future we will see that the shift to more moral um, ways of yeah. But the people that don't want to, I'd still say that if they care about, you know, if they if they have any care whatsoever, they should boycott industries that do this because there's no other. We're not doing this to this kind of thing, breeding human beings into existence to cut their heads off. A bit. We're not doing that. We're not, we're not doing that. That's an, that's an egregious moral crime if we were to do this to human beings. We have a clear double standard here as a, as a world. I don't think the world will ever be non-violent if while we continue to do this to animals. I think there will always be violence. I think this violence emanates out. The way we look at animals as inferior, um, as we, we bring them down to this level where we're like, you're property to me and we can chop you up and eat you, even if it's, you know, it's not morally justified. I don't care why I draw an arbitrary line. The, this moral schizophrenia we have as a society emanates out to us as people and how we treat each other. And I just think it's a, it's a cancer on, on us as, human, as a human race. So the, the way that you live, the principles that you have, they, they emanate out to others. And you can be part of that change or you can be someone who's just like, you know what, apathy and I don't care, I'm gonna do, this is my line and I don't really care. Or you can really be part of something and I think that you can be part of something. But do, do you think enough people are going to care to change the industries? No, and not everyone wanted slavery abolished or, you know, I'm sure people, 
I'm sure the Nazis didn't want the Holocaust to end. And I'm sure like there's always going to be pushback, but obviously like we hope to get enough people on the side that animals deserve rights and don't deserve this to happen to them for our trivial interests. Um, enough to be able to change culture and change laws. And once the laws are in place, then, you know, animals have person. I, I want to see animals with personhood. Do, do you think that will ever be able, th that will be the case? I think it's possible. I think it's much more uh, possible. It's, I think it's much more probable that animals will have rights way before people stop killing them um, because uh, people still kill each other and we have human rights. Yeah. You know, so people will still breach that, but there's at least some legal framework protecting human beings and uh, I want some legal framework actually protecting animals and not just protecting some type of welfare guideline or something, it's giving them some welfare guideline while we chop their head off. You know, uh, I want to see them being not treated as property and having... Would, would you agree that majority of people uh, would have to be on this side of things for the shift towards the, hum the, towards the animal rights not to happen? Not the majority, no. You don't, A significant no? amount of the population, yes. So what, uh, where do you think we're at right now in terms of that? We're in the early stages of uh, uh, changing the minds of culture, uh, consciousness. I think um, there's a lot of work to do. But the amount of people you've spoken to, right? Like, what what is the percentage of people that actually agree with this set of values that you? Yeah, it, I, I I couldn't tell you. Uh, the ones who don't agree end up contradicting themselves quite quite um, in a quite. The ones who kind of defend the animal agriculture industry kind of end up looking like heartless in a way. They look like they're defending the indefensible and they really can't argue their way around it without contradicting themselves. And, you know, so I put that out there for people to, to make their own mind up about. And, and I think most people, uh, the people who care about animals mostly agree, but they just can't put it into practice for some reason. Maybe they don't have the willpower or something like this when it really is not the practical point is really easy to address. I mean, it's not that hard. Yeah, no, certainly. It's just for me, like the word is like, we, we both agree that this is immoral and th th these practices, we, we can't continue doing this, right? Yeah. Animals should have rights and they, and these killings and suffering that should yeah. just be stopped. But my worry is that there will not be enough people to make that shift. Well, if you haven't yet, I can see why you worry, you know, because what the first step to change is to change yourself. And then you can be lead by example and change others, right? And um, but if, if you if you haven't lived consistent yet yourself, then how would you expect others to make that change? You know. But yeah. I think when no, you, right. you realise that, you, right. yeah. So me, I've been a vegan ten years, and I've been. Uh, I really yeah. do believe that animals can have rights because it's stupid for them not to. They have. Um, they share the property of sentience with us. Mm. You know that what they haven't. They have inherent value. You know, human rights are based off of inherent value they share that property with us why don't they have rights and it's because there's, there's industry behind it people want to eat meat there's all these stupid reasons that sh humans justify this you know um there's a lot of financial interest behind, behind it as well and then people don't want to give up their burgers simple it's too hard they don't want to i like my burgers i like my cheese i don't want to eat vegan burgers or whatever like certainly but then there's there's so many other implications as well in terms of the economical impact of this because that is a huge part of economy right of course so um that you know, a massive shift in, in these practices would cause a, it would be a very, massive. very huge, you know, so yeah, it has to it be. It would gradual. be gradual because change doesn't happen like that, does it? Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah. I'd like it to, and too bad, economy, too bad. Because, uh, you know, that's not a justification to do this to human beings, the economy. And we, the economical argument was deployed during uh, the times of slavery in America as well. They said, oh, you know, what are we going to do with, what are we going to do with our industry? It's not yeah. a reason to keep things, you know, to violate animal or human rights, uh, the economy argument. Yeah. Well, a lot to think for me about, really. Um, and I'm very, very glad I had this conversation Thanks, with you, man. I think. Um, I appreciate it. What really stuck out to me is, that, yes, I think like having like that personal power of impact, I think, I think is huge. And I think having had this conversation with you, I think now I, I will think more about these practices, about what is happening behind these industries and choose better choices, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll make better choices. Um, in my diet uh it's, you're right it's just so easy like there's no, there's no you, there's no reason not to like like i mean i i don't i like almond milk i like i like these vegan alternatives like it really is like just such not a difficult decision at all like, maybe just yeah. feel compelled to
you didn't yeah. feel motivated to you didn't see the reason exactly to exactly it's like i said like i really you don't you go along with your life like not really thinking about these things but it's just it really is not that difficult so huh. and it yeah. means the world like what you like this isn't a trivial change it's, it is for you and your practices but on the other end of it like you've really made a political statement here like i don't want to be a part of this like yeah. i don't want to be a part of this and, and in the future when i'm talking to my grandchildren i'll say to them i boycotted that madness Back then, I didn't. I was one of the people who stood up and said, "I don't want to be a part of torturing and murdering and robbing the rights of these animals." I didn't think it yeah. because you said to me at the start of this conversation, "Case closed." Like they, they are valuable beings. They are equal to us. Yeah. I mean, I sh think we share equal property, or you know, maybe if their sentence is a little less, who cares? At what point do we do we do we drag a human being sentence down? But and it becomes morally justified to cut their head off and eat them. I don't think they're you know. You know, I just don't think you can do that. You can, you can, you can trade equal as a human to a, the mind of a cow, and cutting their head off and eating them for a steak is still completely morally unjustifiable. So, yeah, um, yeah, you can be part of something big. And well, thanks so much for this conversation. It was really, really in insightful and uh, helpful in so many ways. Um, yeah, there's a lot to think about. Um, Go home and uh, thanks have some so fun. much. Also, uh, good, good talking to you. Yeah. Good talking to you. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. And how to go vegan. Just look it up on our line. I mean, I usually give out pamphlets, but we're not allowed to right now. Where's the, what's the, what's the website? Well, just look up. Uh, I do on my channel, but you can, uh, you can just look at um, just any YouTube video, how to go vegan. Right. And it will give you all the practical tips you need. I, I choose a, I do a, a thing called Challenge 22. I'm involved with a thing called Challenge 22, where you sign in on a Facebook group and they give you support. There's uh, Veganuary, they also give you, uh, they're, they're always there to give support. There's many different, uh, I mean, you, cho you, you choose the one that you like the best, but it's really just, uh, re you, you just got to replace fish and eggs and dairy and things like that. Start thinking about other other ways humans exploit animals, but I think you're, you're, you're almost there. So, no worries, take care. I think a lot of people might find themselves in his position where they like, they agree with it, but they don't feel compelled to, to kick those other products and a lot of people who are vegetarian think like this too they don't think it's a moral urgency to to remove the eggs and dairy but from the animals perspective and, and from an animal rights perspective uh those animals are having their rights violated just like the the pig in the gas chamber is just uh you know the the suffering maybe you, maybe the suffering is not equal in all cases but the rights violations are very clear it's the fact the animals are treated as property and will be decapitated in the slaughterhouse because they're treated as property and uh, i do believe it's a moral obligation if you care about rights uh, of animals and if you care about this inherent value we share then you it's a moral obligation to boycott those industries as well so i think he got the picture i think he saw that his uh that his uh, moral system was contradicting itself and he just had an arbitrary line i think he saw the the inconsistency was just drawing an arbitrary line where he decides and um yeah i hope he goes home and makes a change <laughs>